my friends, it's your old pal Jordan the Lion. How are you all doing today? I hope you said great, I'm doing great. Today we're gonna have a little bit of a sad vlog because we're going to the cemetery, but we're gonna try and make it fun because we're talking about a great man today, a guy who was an absolute giant in the wrestling world. Talking about Ray Trailer, the big boss man. Days with Jordan the Lion, it begins right now. And this vlog actually takes us out to Dallas, Georgia. I have actually come out here and visited Ray before, but I did not vlog it, so I thought I would share his gravesite with you all today. All right, we have made it over to the Dallas City Cemetery. Ray is actually, he's buried over in this section, so when you see the blue sign when you come in, you're gonna go that way, just to the left of the road. It took me quite some time to find him when I was out here, but if I remember right, it was about halfway out there. So right over here, kind of by himself, if you look for the, the fence, is right here. Ray Trailer, also known as Big Bubba Rogers, also known as the Big Boss Man, which is signature right there. Passed away at the age of 41 years old. One of, I mean, he was 6'7", 330, 330 pounds, and just an absolutely great worker in the ring. The guy could jump, he could do all kinds of things that normal big men couldn't do. There, somebody left the action figure. Have that same one since I was a kid. It says in our Hearts Forever trailer, and in the end, it's not the years in your life that count, it's the life in your years, Abraham Lincoln. Ray always kept his personal life pretty personal, so really the only thing we know about Ray is that he was born in Marietta, Georgia, not too far from here, and was an actual corrections officer, which, you know, Vince McMahon, that's how he usually came up with his best gimmicks, was when he was gonna bring a wrestler in, he would interview them and ask them what kind of jobs they'd had, anything interesting about their life, their hobbies, anything. So when eventually, Big Bubba Rogers, Ray Trailer came to the WWF, he became the big boss man. But let me tell you how he actually got there. So Ray was actually working as a corrections officer when some guys saw how big he was and talked him into training to be a wrestler. So he started doing that a little bit on the side and then realized he really liked it and he was really good at it. So he was kind of a jobber at first for the Continental Wrestling, Continental Championship Wrestling for about a year and ended up getting a title shot, an NWA Alabama title shot. He ended up taking off and going and working for Crockett Promotions. Now at first when they brought him in, he was a jobber and Dusty was kind of calling the shots there. He was the genius at the time. He would always say he was genius and when he was coming up with ideas and he saw how good of a worker Ray was so he took him off of TV for like three months and then brought him back as Jim Cornette's personal bodyguard. And I think what Jim Cornette said was the storyline at the time was that Jim had been attacked and his mom had sent a bodyguard to protect him from Louisville. And so that's who Big Bubba Rogers was. And he ended up becoming an adversary for Dusty Rhodes. Dusty, Magnum TA, and then he ended up having a feud with Ronnie Garvin. Crockett had bought you WF and he sent Ray to go work over there. And the second night that Ray was there, he became the champion beating one man gang. So he was the champion there for several months and then lost the title to Dr. Death, Steve Williams. And they had a feud going back and forth. And then he went to go work in all Japan for about five months, mostly, but not only, teaming with Bruiser Brody for quite a bit of that time. And then he ended up getting a contract to come work for WWF, Vince McMahon. 
they were a big deal at the time and of course when Vince found out that he was a correction officer that's what they ended up going with they ended up making him the big boss man now I remember him breaking in I guess he had something before this but I remember him attacking Hulk Hogan on the brother love show with his nightstick I'd never seen this guy before and that was kind of like the first time he saw him and he started tag teaming with Akeem they were the twin towers and that's what provoked macho man and Paul Kogan to become the mega powers and I'll never forget hating the big boss man when I was a kid because I remember him handcuffing Miss Elizabeth and just being heartbroken and and seeing macho man going crazy about how Paul Kogan needed him to come down and save him during matches for him, the big boss man, and that he thought Hulk should be doing it on his own. And then after their matches with the Twin Towers, that's what caused the Mega Powers to end up breaking up and the whole Hulk Hogan and Randy feud. But the Twin Towers continued to go on to be a pretty big tag team for a little while. And then the big boss man ended up kind of turning face. He basically um, was offered from Ted DiBiase money to steal Jake the Snake Roberts' snake Damien, refused to do it, and that was one of the things I always appreciated the most about the big boss man, Ray Trailer. He was as good of a face as he was a heel. He could be as loved or as hated as he wanted to be. It was, it was so amazing. So he ended up having um, a great feud with the Mountie and um, throwing the Mountie in jail at the end of the match. And then he had a feud with a former prisoner, Nails, who claimed that Big Boss Man had, had assaulted him in prison. And so they had a nightstick match. And then Ray, it seemed like they just started using him as enhancement talent. Like he was just there to lose to the new young talent. And so he ended up leaving WWF at the end of his contract. I believe at that time he went back to All Japan Pro Wrestling and since WWF owned the Big Boss Man, he couldn't perform as Big Boss Man, so he went back to Big Bubba and wrestled there wearing the Big Boss Man shirt. And then not too long after that, he decided to come back to the US and actually went to the WCW and wrestled Vader and Sting and several other people. And he started out being known as the, the boss, but he was wearing the similar attire here and WWE sent a cease and desist telling him that his character was a little too close to their character so he switched over to being the guardian angel there for a while and he was part of Kevin Sullivan's faction and and then he was he joined I remember him going out in the ring and kind of breaking kayfabe and saying you know I'm not Big Bubba I'm Ray Trailer I'm just a man who loves to wrestle like basically saying he was a real like a normal guy and that he just wanted a job in wrestling seems like the nwo came out and welcomed him in and then immediately turned on him and then next thing you know he's feuding with like kurt henning and vincent aka virgil and scott hall and people like that so yeah he didn't uh i don't know i didn't feel like his wcw years during the nwo and all that stuff was they were utilizing his best talents because he really was a really talented worker, really talented performer. And from what everybody says, just a really good guy also. He came back basically being hired muscle for Vince McMahon. He was wearing like a SWAT uniform. And I remember Steve Austin telling kind of a funny story that he was trying to help um, Ray out because he loved Ray. And there was supposed to be an angle where at the end of one of Stone Cold's matches, Ray was supposed to come and interfere and it was gonna set up a feud for them. But I guess um, from what he said, Ray was in the back playing cards and missed the cue and Gerald Briscoe had to come down and interfere. So they basically blew the, the whole thing. But during this time, he was always coming down, Big Boss Man was always coming down and interrupting or assaulting people for Vince McMahon. And this is when he did his, I, I hated this, the stupid dog thing with Al Snow. Um, it was kind of funny when he did the, he was wrestling the big show. He was doing like an angle with the big show. And they wrote the, it was so stupid that it was like funny. They, they made the big show's father die as a, you know, a fake storyline. And then at the funeral, Big Boss Man's in the hearse has a chain wrapped around the casket and he ended up getting um he was hardcore champion several times there over the years and then of course wwe as they had done before started using him mainly as enhancement talent um he, he basically was just being used to 
put over other wrestlers, younger wrestlers. Sadly, Ray's life came to an untimely end at the age of 41 years old. He was, um, was found dead from a heart attack. Luckily, his talents have been acknowledged by the WWE, and he is in the Hall of Fame. His wife and two daughters went and inducted him into the Hall of Fame, so he will forever be remembered there. But man, what a great career. He really did everything. I mean, he wasn't the champion or the Intercontinental Champion, but I mean, he was in the NWA, he was in Crockett, he was in All Japan, he was in WWF in its heyday, both of its heydays. He was in WCW. I mean, he really just got to experience the greatest years of the business. Rest in peace, Ray Trailer. Like I said earlier in the vlog, one of my favorite things about Ray Trailer was that he was as good of a face, which means a good guy, as he was a bad guy. He could make you love him or hate him at the drop of a hat. That's a true talent. Plus, being as tall as he was and over 300 pounds and being able to jump and do the things that he could, absolute legend. I mean, that was he was lucky. That was the era when Vince McMahon wanted every big guy he could find. And, you know, that was... Dusty spotted it first. Dusty's genius spotted Ray's talents and ability first, but WWF made him a superstar. Rest in peace, Ray. Thank you all for watching. We'll see you next time. Have a great night and goodbye.